Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this charmed tote bag. This is a great little tote, perfect as a purse, a tote bag for your child's activities. My kids will be using these for piano lessons. It's a great size to hold notebooks, tablets, or on the go crafts. I posted a video prior to this one, which I will link in the information icon. I just wanted to talk in depth further about this tote and the pattern. I also have this tote in a larger beach bag version, which I do show you that beach bag version in that video. So I would love it if you head over there, watch it, then you can get all the information on the patterns and you know the PDFs and everything that will come along with this tutorial. Um, but of course, with all my tutorials, you can find all this information over at the website, which is linked below. I will have a list of materials and tools I use in this video. So let's just jump right into it. So this bag does have a lot of pattern pieces. So we're going to try to do this as organized as possible. So I'm going to show you all the pieces for the outside front um, and then for the outside back and then the inside um, one side and then the inside on the other side. So this is all the pieces you will need for the front of this tote bag. Um, I will have everything organized in a PDF for you. I will also provide a written PDF um, that can be available for purchase over at my Etsy shop or my Shopify. So you'll find that link um, over at the blog post, but I will have just the measurements on a PDF so that if you want to just download the numbers, um, they will be there available for you so you can easily download that. Um, but of course, the lengthy tutorial will is a, is a purchase. So, um, so yeah. So now I'm just going to show you all the pieces for the back of the bag. And I didn't mention this earlier, but the back of the bag has a large panel that I um, created two separate pockets for. So when we get to that stage, then I will um, discuss what options you have for the back of the bag. Um, so every time I get all my little pieces all together, then I always put like a little clip in it. I even sometimes put safety pins with labels on each piece just so that I can say super organized. Um, this is going to be the inside um, inside panel that has pockets. And then my last panel is going to be just a plain panel with um, just two pieces. And I'll talk further about this one. Um, this is, again, another customizable section of the bag where you can do um, whatever you need to fit your purpose. So we're going to start off with the front of the bag and we're going to start with a zipper that is about eight and a half inches long and we will install that with the two small pieces first. Um, I'm so sorry if it's a little bright. Sometimes it's hard to tell when you're filming. <laughs> so I'm just going to take my zipper. I'm going to figure out which way it opens and I want it to open from left to right. And I'm going to place that with the zipper pulled down on the outside of the bag fabric. I'm going to take the lining piece, which is the same size, and I'm going to lay that over top. And then I'm just going to do a seam right along the zipper teeth. I chose not to use a zipper foot in this bag making, and normally you would see me using a zipper foot, but that's just because this particular tape um, is very wide, and, uh, and so I just chose to not do it. And maybe I was slightly lazy and I didn't feel like going upstairs to get it. <laughs> but just know that if you have a zipper foot, I would definitely use it. Okay, so as you're going along, you might need to move your zipper pull so you don't hit it because you don't want to smash your needle. Especially if, if you have an older machine. This machine is a Brother CP7500 um, and it's pretty good. It has a fail safe. So if I do hit a something hard, it will stop. But my other machine would just plow right through it. <laughs> And then get flung off into my face. So I'm just going to take the fabric now and I just um, flipped it so that it's right sides out. And then I'm going to do top stitch. Again, I'm going to apologize because some of the shots I am blocking it with my hand and I know that some people love to comment about those, um, those things. <laughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom half of the zipper. And I'm going to take the two other larger panels that are again of the outer fabric and then my lining fabric. So I'm going to take that finished piece and I'm going to place that on top of the outer fabric with the zipper pull facing down. 
and I'm going to line that edge up with the zipper tape and then I'll place the lining fabric on top and I'll just clip that all into place. I'll do the same thing where I will sew down the edge of the zipper teeth and then I'll flip it right sides out and I will do another top stitch. I like to do my top stitches with maybe a 3 or 3.5 with my machine and then I usually do a 2.5 for the inner seams. Um, I like to bump it up just because I like to have more of a, you know, it looks more like decorative if it's a larger stitch length. So just keep that in mind that I do go back and forth depending on what um, what part of the bag I am sewing. So I'm just again doing that top stitching right along this edge. And I'm using a canvas for the outer and a cotton for the inner, but I have made this out of cotton with a medium weight interfacing and then I've lined it with a waterproof canvas. So that was um, a really great combination too. Um, this last piece, which will be the back of the zipper pouch. This is kind of like the inside lining. This is also made out of cotton. So depending on your um, your seam sizes, um, depending on how you installed your zipper, when you put this back panel on, it might be a little too big. If it is a little too big, just chop that right off. Don't worry about it. Um, I made it a little bit larger just to account for those seam allowances when you are installing your zipper. So now I'm going to take the side front panels and these are made out of waterproof canvas. And I really like using the waterproof canvas because you don't need to add any interfacing. It's very durable. Um, it repels water, of course, and um, it's just nice and stiff. So I have a nice and you know rigid tote bag. So if you can't, if you can get your hands on that, or even some nice canvas or duck canvas, I would definitely use that for um, these accent pieces and the base of the bag. So I'm just going to line up those two pieces right on the sides of my zipper and I will do a quarter of an inch seam allowance down both sides. This bag, um, the majority of my seams are um, a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So the finished measurements of that um, side panels that we are attaching right now is the size that you want. So if the front panel, your zipper panel, um, is longer than these panels, then just chop those down to the same length as these side panels. And then when we're done putting those on, we will flip those over and we will do a top stitch. And sometimes when I go over the zipper, I do like to go back and forth. And that's just to kind of like make those stitches a little bit tighter. I didn't seem to do it this time, but normally I do. Um, okay. So this is how it is looking. And we're just going to take those side flaps. We're going to fold those down. And as you can see, there is a seam underneath. So we're going to just make sure that that seam is going towards the fold. And that's just going to help. So when we do do that top stitch over top, we're going to sew through that seam and then that's going to make it stay nice and flat against your fabric. So then after we're done that, we're going to put the bottom panel on and we're just going to do that right sides together. Sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance along the bottom. And if you do have any excess, make sure you cut that off and then we will fold it down and do the same top stitching over top of that seam. So I'm just going to go ahead and let you watch this next step and then we can talk a little bit about the next panel, which will be the back panel. Um, that will have a large pocket on the back and I divided those pockets up um, into sections and um, you will see that very shortly. But that's the good thing about this pattern is that you can customize it to work in any way that you want. Um, but of course the main base of the bag, the measurements are there for you. So we're just going to go ahead and do that last top stitching on the second side panel. 
So you can kind of tell that the seam was trying to go the other way. So I just made sure that I went underneath and pushed that seam so it was going the same direction as the top of the fabric. And then we will add that. So now we're just going to go ahead and add that bottom panel and we'll do a quarter of an inch seam allowance for this. And then we'll do the same thing as before. We're going to flip that down and do the top stitching. And that's just going to make it look um, more professional, keep everything nice and flat and beautiful. Okay, so now we have the front panel completely completed. So now we can just place that to the side and now we're going to work on the back of the bag. So that was the bottom panel and I just placed that to the side and then this is the large panel and I'll place that to the side and we're going to work on the pocket which is going to go on the front of the back of the bag. I'm getting confusing. <laughs> so you're going to have two pieces of fabric that are the same size. I have these, this canvas that matches the front and then the waterproof canvas and I line that up um, with the top of the fabric. So if this is a directional fabric, you want to make sure that you're going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance along the top of your print of the direction and we will just do that and then we will flip it right sides out and do a top stitching along that and that's just going to finish off the edge very nicely and that will um, make for your pocket. If you wanted to get a little bit fancy, you could take your lining fabric, push it up a little bit so that you can see it peeking over um, the outer fabric and that'll almost give it like a little bit of a piping look. I did that on the bag that I made for my daughter, which um, if you haven't already checked over at the blog post, I do have photos of hers. Hers was made out of vinyl and waterproof canvas and cotton and it's so cute. Um, but it really adds a really nice little detail. Um, so if you wanted to do that, you can. If not, um, you don't have to. So this is the finished uh, pocket panel. And now we will take this and we will lay this flat on the large back panel. So this is how it is looking. And we're just going to place it on top. If you would like to do a baste, which is just kind of do a quick seam all the way around the edges, like one eighth of an inch seam allowance just to keep everything nice and flat and you know, so there's no shifting, you can do that. Or if you like to live on the edge, you can just leave it and just risk it. <laughs> but next we're going to take our ruler and we're going to measure out the center of the back panel. We have to put some sort of pockets in here, if not this is going to be a little bit floppy on the back of your bag so I'm going to make this into two separate um, pouches um, but if you want you could make it into three or four or whatever you want to do it is a rather deep pocket so I wouldn't recommend using it for you know pens and things like that because it would probably get lost but it's good for you know little notebooks and things like that so I'm just gonna do one uh, seam right down the center of the pocket and then after I'm going to attach that bottom panel um, which will be the bottom panel will be on every piece of the bag so um, that's just exactly the same as we did it in the first section so I'm just doing that seam right down make sure you double tack it right at the top of that pocket because there will be stress on those seams and you want to make sure that they're nice and tight and they don't end up ripping as you put things in and out of your bag. And now I'm just going to attach that bottom panel again with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then we will flip that and do a top stitch. And that will be the end of the back panel. So once you kind of get the hang of this bag, once you have everything organized, the front panel is really the most complicated part in my opinion. So once you have that down, then I mean, these things are so easy and quick to whip up. So I never actually did um, talk about the straps um, in this video. I never showed you the straps. But um, just keep in mind that I I made this, I didn't make the straps. I actually just kind of use webbing. So I actually used um, an old purse strap and cut that in half. So you'll see eventually, but 
let's work on the inside of the bag. So I do have this made out of the waterproof canvas again. And for the pockets, I'm going to be using that canvas. And because of that, it doesn't fray. Um, so I am going to be just hemming it down. I'm not gonna be double folding it. I'm just gonna fold it down one time and then just do a seam along that. If you wanted to use cotton, then I would recommend doing some interfacing and then take this piece and double it and then fold it right in half. That is what I would do if I wanted to make this into a cotton pocket. But because I don't have that issue with this waterproof canvas, that's what I did. So now I'm going to take that and I'm going to place that on the large inner lining panel and line up the bottoms. And then I'm going to figure out what, um, what my seams are going to be. So I wanted to make sure that I had a larger pocket and then I had a pocket that could fit my phone and then a few pockets for uh, pens and pencils. It's the perfect height so you can put a few stationary items in and um, so you just you know just use your ruler and then gauge whatever you know just think what you, what what are you gonna put in this bag um, and then you know just kind of gauge from there if you're gonna do pens and pencils I would do um, a one inch one inch pockets and then for a phone it's probably about four inches and then I, I just did a few so just do whatever you know you want to do for your own purpose and then after that you're going to um, just you know just sew right down those little chalk marks I really love this little chalk marking tool if you have never seen it before um, it's sort of like it's like a rectangle they're really awesome though um, I will have over at the blog post though any tools that I use I love to share the tools and of course if you do um, happen to purchase anything off of the Amazon affiliate links then that just goes to help my channel so these are really great marking tools and especially on this canvas it really shows up nicely and then you can kind of just wipe it off with a little bit of water so making sure that you do double tack the tops of those pockets making sure that you know they are nice and strong and when you do put those items in and out of your bag that you know those seams will not rip and we're just gonna do all of them and then we'll yeah and then this is pretty much done except for we have to add that bottom panel like we have done on the rest of them but I'm not gonna show you that clip because hopefully by now you got the idea of how that panel gets attached and now we will just work on the last panel which is just a simple there is nothing really to this panel. Um, for this one, I left it blank just because I am using it as just a regular tote bag. But if you wanted to, you could do the same pocket style as the previous um, lining piece we did. Or if you know how to insert a zipper into the lining, you can do that. I do have a tutorial on how to do that. So I will also provide that link at the blog post. Um, but to make this super easy, I'm just going to go ahead and make that a regular blank panel okay so here is the front completely done and I'm just gonna go ahead and snip off any excess threads or the um, excess zipper tape and then I'll take the back panel of my bag and we will start to assemble the whole thing so as you can see this is how the little zipper pouch works and you can see the lining on the inside there And now I'm just going to take that back panel, here it is, and I'll place that with the right sides together. And we will do a seam all the way around, except for of course the top. And when you do put your pieces together, you want to make sure that those um, seams that are at the bottom panels they do line up it'll just make for a better a better bag it'll look better if everything is nicely lined up perfectly and we're just gonna do a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around this piece except for the top <laughs> I 
I can feel the finish line. So I hope you're enjoying this tutorial so far though. Um, if you do make this, I would love to see it. So of course, come over to Facebook and Instagram and show off your bags. I really love when people take my um, my designs and even just kind of put their own spin on it or you know just kind of you know give some creative changes to it just to just to show what you can do so now I'm gonna work on the inside lining so here is the one side and as you can see a pencil fits in there perfectly so cute and then I will take the blank panel and put that right to together lining up the side seams of the bottom panel and then we will do the same thing we will sew around this one but we will be leaving about a six or seven inch hole at the bottom and that's just going to give us a good amount of space for turning okay so i'm just going to do um a little bit of a bigger seam allowance now so we have been working with a quarter of an inch so maybe um just like one millimeter more just so that it kind of fits in nicely in the bag you don't want to go a whole quarter of an inch bigger but just kind of like in between and that will make things fit a lot more nicer when you go to insert the lining into the bag and i like to kind of go double pass over those bigger seams when I got to the little intersection there just to make sure that that is nice and tight. So now we're going to cut notches into the bottom of our bag because this is going to box out the bottom so that you actually have a bottom of your bag. And I'm going to again use that little chalk and I'm going to use a ruler and I'm going to measure two inches away from the seams. So as you can see I'm not doing two inches away from the edge of the fabric. I line that up with the seam. And then I'm just going to snip that. And if you wanted to make your box a little bit wider, um, you can of course choose to do so. Um, for this, when you do a two inch box, um, it should measure out to be, I think like three, a little under four inch wide box bottom bag so that's perfect for just like a bunch of books and you know pencil cases and stuff so then I'm just going to kind of fan out that cut and we will line up the side seams and we will place some clips just to make sure everything stays nice and lined up and then we will sew right across that raw edge I'm going to go fairly quickly through this process. Um, I've done this many times in my tutorials. So hopefully you have watched prior tutorials and you kind of have the gist of how this goes. But I did this of course with the outer bag and then the lining of the bag as well. So here is me creating those little boxes on the lining and again, just clipping those, making sure our side seams are nicely lined up. And then we can take them over to the sewing machine and do that quarter of an inch seam allowance, making sure you tack these very well. So double or back stitch at the beginning. I like to back stitch over the seam just to make sure it's nice and tight and then back stitch at the end. Sometimes I find if I don't do a back stitch right over this seam here, then when I go to flip the bag, you will see the, the stitches will sort of stretch a little bit and you'll see it right in that one spot. Especially when you're using something like vinyl where um, it's very obvious. So you want to try to make that as tight as possible so that you don't end up seeing any stitches when you are done. So one, two, three, four, we are going to do all of those corners. My Labrador is making noises behind me, so if you can hear her. <laughs> so now the outer bag is taking shape, as you can see. And so, so is the lining. 
And I think I will flip the lining right sides out. I think. Yep, I, I am doing that. <laughs> and then I will place this inside the bag. So depending on which way you want things to go, um, I'm going to have the, all the little pockets um, facing the back of the bag. If you choose to have a zipper inside your lining, then I would put the zipper towards the back of the bag. And don't forget to cut all your little threads. And so I'm just going to place that inside and then you can line up all of the raw edges and make sure that those side seams are nice and lined up. And I'm going to grab my straps. So these straps again came from the second hand store and this honestly is just this is the way to go. I go and I find the section of Value Village or whatever you have and you just they sell purse straps that people didn't use you know that just kind of came with their purse and they just chose not to use them so they give them the goodwill and then they sell them at a super cheap price so definitely grab those if you see them so I'm just going to mark um, my straps about four inches away from either side and I'll just place those inside the bags um, one on both sides making sure that my straps are not twisted on the inside and lining up the raw edge of the purse strap with the raw edge of the bag and then again we will do on both sides sorry it's hard to tell but I will have more pictures over at the blog post. So if you have any difficulties, then you can head over there to get greater clarification. <laughs> there you go. And if you are using a strap that has a right or wrong side, like mine does, then just when you go to put it inside the, the uh, in between the layers, just make sure that the right side is facing the right side of your outer fabric. So now I'm just going to do a seam all the way around the edge of the bag and I'm going to be doing a quarter inch seam allowance making sure you have all of your layers caught and then when you get over those straps um, go back a couple times just to make those real nice and tight and make sure everything is nice and um, strong because of course they're straps. But we will be taking the bag now and we will be flipping in them right sides out through that hole that we left in the lining. And we will do a top stitch along the edge of the bag. So that will also greater um, strengthen those straps as well. So this is called birthing the bag. It's pretty exciting and you get to see if you actually succeeded making sure all of your fabric was nicely cut and nothing, you know, <laughs> nothing didn't work out, but it turned out pretty good. This is my second version or second attempt. I have made a third one since then, but every time you make one, things just get easier and easier because you know what you're doing. So now I'm just going to do the edge of the bag and I like to put some clips, especially when you're using a thicker material, you want to kind of just tell it what to do because it doesn't really want to listen to you. Um, and I don't usually press my waterproof canvas. So if you have a type of fabric that you can press, then I would definitely press the edges. And we'll just do a top stitch all the way around that. And then once you're done that, then you can just take that lining out. And then I just did a top stitch, um, or you can do an invisible stitch by hand to close up the hole in the lining. And then you're pretty much done. So now you have a beautiful tote bag you can impress all your friends with. And of course, um, you know, if your kids need one, they will absolutely love it. And especially um, they can say that mommy or grandma or, you know, daddy made this for me. So this is how it turned out. I love this boat fabric. 
I wish the boats were a little bigger so that I can see them more, but I still think it looks really cute um, just the way it is. And then I have all my little pockets there. So thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. Um, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share over on Pinterest and all those places. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye, guys!